What's good with y'all, man? My name is Tej, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make a sampled beat for Drake and 21 Savage, similar to their song, Jimmy Cooks, off of Drake's Honestly Nevermind. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you wanna see the latest on what I'm working on, including these videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram, at Beats by Tej. Per usual, I will have the finished beat played at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. And with all that being said, let's just jump into the beat. The sample selection and manipulation is probably the hardest part of this beat. Overall, I'd say the drums are fairly straightforward. So for this beat, I have two samples. They're both relatively the same. One just has less complexity than the other. So the two samples that I did get were both from Splice, the first one being this one. And then I got a second sample, which is just the same thing, but with a guitar top line on it. I downloaded both of them and I imported them into FL Studio. Originally, the tempo of these samples was 160 beats per minute. When I imported them, I had the project tempo at 160 and then I double clicked on both of them and I went to the mode under time stretching and selected stretch. And then that made it so that the length of the sample stayed at eight measures. Once I did that, I went up to the tempo here and then I scrolled down to 154 beats per minute. So it's a little bit slower than the original tempo. And I thought the sample was cool, but I felt like in order to fit the vibe it should have been lower in pitch so on each of these i went to the pitch and decreased it by 500 cents or five half steps so the new key of the sample is now d minor and once i did that i routed both of those to the same mixer track and i put a few effects on it and i put a kind of shallow low cut on this and then i put a couple cuts in the low mids to cut out some of the harshness and muddiness in the sample and then i opened up rc20 and put on the vinyl one preset and i just kept on the wobble distortion and magnetic knobs and I primarily did this to make the sample just sound a little more vintage. Next I put on Fruity Reverb and I believe this is the default preset. I just adjusted the size, low cut, and a few of these knobs over here and then I put on Fruity Love Filter on the Low Pass 2 preset and in the mixer I adjusted the mix level to 50%. So once I had made all the adjustments such as the pitch, tempo, and effects, my new sample sounds like this. And overall, I thought it was pretty good. I like the fact that the sample was a little simpler, so it gave me a little bit more leeway with what I wanted to do with the drums. Even still, I tried to keep the drums fairly simple. I believe Tay Keith was the one that did the drums for this track, so typically he keeps his drums pretty simple, but they usually fit the beat really well and they sound hard. The first drum sound that I grabbed was this. And it's just a pretty typical snare. And in the case of most trap beats, the clap, or in this case, the snare, is hitting on the third beat of every measure. Next, I put in my hi-hat sound. Once again, it's a pretty standard drum sound. It sounds pretty close to a hit one hi-hat. This pattern is actually super simple. All I did to make this is I went into the channel rack, I right-clicked on my sound, and then hit fill each two steps. And once I did that, I just filled in these two notes right here in the channel rack, and that translates to these rolls right here. For these two longer rolls, I went up to the snap to grid menu, and I selected one half step snapping, and put in these two rolls using that. And that's really it. Similar to Jimmy Cook's, the overall drum patterns, especially the hi-hats, are far simpler compared to trap beats that are used for artists like Lil Baby and Future. And the effects that you're hearing on the hi-hat are some effect tricks. I went to the 1 8 tempo setting and added reverb and reverse here. And on the reverse, I lowered the mix level a little bit. Next, I put in my snare. Once again, this is following the same theme as the previous drum patterns, which is simplicity. I just have it hit on the off beats here and I just adjusted the velocities a little bit. But other than that, it's a really straightforward snare pattern. After I laid down the snare pattern, I added my kick. And I'd say for this beat, the kick 
adds most of the groove and a lot of the punch for the drums so i would say for these type of beats the kick is probably as if not more important to the overall bounce of your drums than the 808 and you might see on the bottom that some of the velocities are adjusted on the kick this just makes the kicks sound a little less static and overall just makes the drums have a little more bounce And then once I had my kicks down, I put in my open app pattern. This primarily was just meant to layer with the 808. And for my final drum sound, I added my 808. And for this, the 808 pattern is pretty simple. And I tried to let the kick do most of the leg work for the lower end of this track. Like I said earlier, the key of the drums are in D minor. So I'm really only using three notes, which is the first, fifth, and sixth notes in the D minor scale, which are D, A, and A sharp respectively. You could say that the 808 played the role of a bass line in this beat. And along with putting in my 808, I sidechained it to my kick. So basically what a sidechain does is it compresses or lowers the volume of the 808. This way the waveforms of your kick and your 808 don't conflict with each other and it just makes the overall sound of the track a whole lot cleaner. This makes more sense, especially for these types of tracks where you have a lot of kicks or your kick is very active compared to your 808. So in order to sidechain your kick to your 808, you wanna go to your kick track, hover over the arrow that goes to your 808, and then right click on it and click sidechain to this track. Once you've done that, open up a limiter and go to this compression menu, and then right click on the empty box under sidechain and select your kick. Once you've done that, you can adjust these six knobs right here to your liking. I'd say the main two that you'd probably use are going to be threshold and ratio. The threshold is just going to mean how loud should your 808 be when your sidechain kicks in. The ratio knob just tells the limiter how much to compress the 808 by. So I'll just play the beat and adjust the knobs and you can see visually how it changes the effect on the 808. The purple area is where the kick is sidechained with the 808 and that's where it adds room for the kick to hit and lowers or compresses the sound of the 808. And for my master track, it's a little bit different from how I normally would do it. I have my typical setup of an EQ with a boost on the second band and the last band and a soft clipper with a threshold and post slightly adjusted. And then I added a fresh air and I turned out the mid a little bit so that way the sample kind of pops a little better in the final mix. And then I have a fruity multi-band compressor on the mastering 2.4 dB preset and then a limiter with the saturation turned down a little bit. So it gives a little bit of like a distorted punch effect to the kick and the 808 when they hit. So that's going to do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see me do next in the comments. And that's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Roll up, Tim.